What's the current depth? Two kilometers. Look, we have a, a resistance flow reading on, on seven of eight sensors. That's high. That's normal. But we are on a deadline, so let me know when it gets to eight. What? But go full torque. We, we gotta slow it up. Just so we won't crack. We're a half mile from the... Hey, Bobby, I don't want to hear it, okay? We should be two miles into solid ore by now. I just want to have a good report by the end of this job. Well, I'd like to make it home by the end of this job. Bobby, I know you need this bonus just as much as I do. Okay, fine. Look, I'm not going full throttle. The guys up there... They're the ones that do recon and QC, not us. Okay, fine, I'll, I'll do it. Wait, don't dominate. Dominate, come on. Okay, who runs the shift? I don't, but no, I, I do. I run the shift. And this thing can do crap on me? Easy. Thanks for squeezing me in. It's good to see you. Yeah, um, well, you know, sometimes it pays to know a planetary scientist. <laughs> <laughs> certainly does. Your hair's different. Oh, yeah, uh, doing a lot of things different these days. Looks good. Thank you. Um, we should probably get inside. I've got a really busy day. So. Yeah, yeah, listen, wh what do you think? I don't know, dinner tonight, just so I can thank you for, for all of this. We can catch up. Maybe go to that little Italian place we used to go to, you remember? <laughs> um, like I said, I, I have a really busy day. Rain check. Sure, yeah. Uh, so I have been telling my team about everything your aerospace firm's been doing on the moon. They're really excited to share ideas and swap war stories. <laughs> But are they excited enough to share your observatory's solar power plant? I mean, come on, my, my Nevada facility really needs that boost. Well, that's why we're here. Uh, so why don't we start off with a tour of the observatory, and we can show you what we're working on, and then maybe um, if there's time, we can take you to the solar power plant. It's just a couple miles up the road. Sure, sure. Wait, 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 listen. I, I just, I want to thank you for, for meeting up. I know I'm not always that easy with meeting up, but I am trying to get better. I really am. Thank you. Uh, thanks for saying that. Um, Wait, hey. You can count on me. We really should get inside. Yeah, right this way. We just upgraded our largest telescope, actually. I'll show you that in a minute. Oh, hey, by the way, did uh, did your team take my advice on installing solar sails on Mojave Team's heliostats? I mean, come on, we're not staying on the moon, right? Right, so there's some things you're not doing differently. You're still 
pushing everything to the limit, huh? This is Steve. Wait, so, you slow down. Taurus Mining Corporation space team. They, they drilled too fast, breaking a trillion newton meters. When they hit or a fault opened. Are, are there any casualties? Is, is my brother okay? Yes. Many, the, the number's still unconfirmed. And the ship? Still intact. But it's in bad shape. It's, it's unable to re-enter Earth in its current state. And sir, the, the debris, it shot out rapidly during the collapse. It's accelerating on a trajectory towards Earth. The size and force means that some of that debris is, is close to Earth impact. There must be signal interference. We have multiple warning signals. Messages from JPL, Sawyer Aerospace, everyone warning us about it. Neos are headed towards Earth and projected here in the Mojave Desert. And there was no advance warning. It was generated in deep space. This is caused by a mining accident on the moon as of 750. Okay, okay. Emergency protocols. Okay. Now. I'm on it. Go, go. Steve. A meteoroid, sir. Headed straight for Earth. You're saying that I caused the meteor to... See, wait! But some of the faster-moving moon fragments are already impacting around the globe. No, no, no! See! Including your current airspace. See, that's impact imminent. Impact imminent, Steve! You gotta get down! Kyle, can you see here? Wait! Are you okay? Yeah, I think so. We must have hit the Pisgah crater. It was a dormant cinder cone volcano, but with an impact like that. All right, come on, we, we have to get out no, of here. No, 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 no. Come no, on, right no. now. No, get inside. Why not? That's why. Come on, let's go. We're reinforced and built to handle almost anything. So we'll be safest here. We can also monitor the situation and, and hopefully help somehow. Thank you. Any word on your brother? Logan and his, his crew are still alive, but the, the ship is wrecked and they're stranded on the moon. There may be other survivors, but no confirmation yet. Gary, what do we know? We're running models to get as many estimates as possible, but we're dealing with very little warning. Our system should be able to handle it, but this is the first time we're dealing with this in real time. We just had a major impact on the crater and full eruption. Okay, what's the lava flow trajectory look like? We should be okay for now, but we may not be if there's a second larger eruption. Well, we, I mean, we can't stop a meteoroid if we don't have the equipment. Agreed, but with a trail of meteors headed toward Earth and... And a rather large meteoroid on a collision course with this planet. Oh, uh, by the way, everyone, this is Steve Sawyer. His team of international astronauts, including his brother Logan, are stranded in a ship on the moon. Do we need to confirm the timeline on the NEO? Gary, run a collision ETA model, please. Okay. Um, estimated collision, 12 hours. And we're still finalizing the location. A collision this size, we are done here. It won't matter where it lands, it'll be complete annihilation. Gary, call Soya Aerospace, those are the codes. No response. All right, just, just, just keep trying. Call in the launch pad outside the lunar mine. I, I need to debrief Logan, see if there's anything he can do on the lunar side. Look, look, my, my brother will do whatever it takes to save humanity, but he will not allow me to rescue him. Hello? Yes, I copy. I have Kyle from Sawyer Aerospace. Sawyer Aerospace, this is Mojave Can Leader Observatory. Do you read? Kyle, can you hear me? Steve, we have yet to make contact, but we're working with local and national authorities. Now the Incoming! <laughs> Kyle. K Kyle, can you hear me? Come in. Try again, try again. Sir, there's no response. I'm sorry, Mr. Sawyer. Um, I just got confirmation that Sawyer Aerospace has been destroyed. Oh. Steve, I am so sorry. I know uh, no. how hard you worked for this, but we have to move quickly if we want any chance of stopping this meteor. With, with the facility gone, the Taurus Mining, Mining Corps has their base of operations in, in the same facility. We're, we're flying solo here. Okay, so how can we help? <laughs> Gary, try and get the Luna 5 ship to respond, please. Gary, before you do that, let's see what we're working with here. Did you do a NEO threat assessment? All agencies confirm the meteoroid to be roughly the size of Manhattan. Plus, that corresponds with what our LIDAR render provides. 
The explosion will result in several waves of debris following the meteoroid. Look, we need to get to the Neo before the fragments start hitting us first. If you can get the DOD on, we need to advise them that the new base of operations is here at the observatory. Sir, I have Luna 5. All right, put, put them through. Luna 5 on the line. Logan? I'm right here, brother. I can hear you loud and clear. Steve, it's good to hear your voice. We're still trying to figure out the situation, but our O2 reserves are looking a little light up here. We're going to get you out of there, okay? I appreciate that, but worry about Earth first. Well, that's why we have you. General Madden from the Pentagon is on open communications. K Carrie, I need you to keep the Luna 5 line open and listening. Okay, I'm on it. Go for Steve Sawyer, General Madden. Steve! We are at Code Red Neo Threat Alert, and the government doesn't trust you to come up with a viable solution to stop the meteoroid because they believe this accident is your fault. Sir, I, I have my brother, Captain Logan, of Luna 5 on the comm as well. He is on the moon and hopefully able to offer some insight. Sir, we have never encountered an accident on this scale, nor could we have predicted a mass of this side headed towards Earth. We've done good work together in the past building the Luna bases on the moon. All right, I know that you're a man who work. I know you didn't do this, but the mining company that you work for did. Sir, I'm asking you to please let me help this. This is what I do. I have my orders. They're to follow military protocol. I'm working with about a thousand of the contractors and every other country on Earth to try to stop this thing. But I'll take your suggestions into consideration, but you need to tell me everything that you know now. Because the authorities, they want nothing to do with you or any of your ideas. And I'm not sure they're even going to allow me to contact you after this. General, I... Please. They're going to have me initiate a global defense using nuclear weapons if there are no other options. We have only ETA 12 hours to impact. Sir, that's impossible. I know, I know. I'll start putting in an emergency action plan in place. I've been trying to get the Joint Chiefs and the UN to listen to be open to your input, but they won't budge. Even if you come up with a viable solution. You're probably going to have to implement it on your own. Logan, did you get all that? Initiate Plan 5L. Yes, on it. Reserve power. Shields up. Initiating rescue contact and warning systems at nearby ships. All right, listen. Focus on board lasers and assess any current equipment that we might be able to use as defense. But as far as stopping a cobalt meteoroid, it's extremely conductive and susceptible to electromagnetic forces. I, I see only two courses of action here. We either blow the damn thing up. Yes. Or we push it away. I vote we push it away. I vote that too. All right, then let's get to work. Just good luck. And I pray you fix this thing before the government does it for you. Logan. <laughs> Steve? Steve, can you hear me? <laughs> Logan! It, it, it no. might it might just be a poor connection, okay? Well, let's try the other room, okay? Let's go. Let's go. Steve? Steve, can you hear me? Steve? Captain, we've lost all main power aboard the ship from a massive EMP. Yeah. We got a limited supply of backup power, not nearly enough O2 or thrust to get us back home. So, I don't know how we're gonna stop this thing, but we gotta do everything that we can to get off this rock and help them save Earth, or there isn't gonna be a home to get back to. If we don't lift off soon with the moon's current position, we may run out of oxygen before we reach the Earth. Well, then, I suggest we get going. Logan, look. They must have survived the initial blast. Nina, prep the decompression chamber. Let's get them inside. Jing, let's guide them in. No, wait. The outage already sapped some of the backup power. With our O2 low, it's going to be tough enough for three people. We can use the tanks in our suits to cut our loss on the way back in. Good, because we're not leaving them out there, Nina. OK, but with so much debris floating around, someone could get knocked into space. We need to reroute power to the tether. Good. So you tie it to the ship. You know, I'm lighter than you. If I'm on the tether, it'll eat up less power. Great. Jing and I'll go. You get power to the tether. Be careful. Keep your tanks on minimum. 
And keep an eye on your levels and come back the second you hear a warning. I cannot get back to Earth without you. Here's an extra O2. Radios? Keep in touch on radio. They use a separate battery and point it up power. Great. Thank you. Удачи. We need contact Luna 5. Is there any way to boost the signal here? The debris field around the area is too thick. Yeah, it, it Try to, to detect a tracking beacon. They should still have battery reserves even after the EMP. If they have power left, they should still send the signal. I have a faint one now, but it's going in and out. Okay, then let's try Morse code. An imminent threat has been detected. The general's back on the line. Okay. Look, we are prepping an international nuclear response, but we can only see the leading edge of the debris field. If you have any solutions to this, is the time to mention them. The DOD is very happy with the, that the EMP didn't hit us on Earth as well. General, this is Dr. Amanda Sawyer. Tell them not to celebrate just yet. The debris cloud will detonate any nuclear weapons before they reach the meteoroid behind it. All incoming NEOs, regardless of size, will bring all the fallout back to Earth. The largest NEO was already set to annihilate the entire planet. A nuclear fallout of this magnitude? What small chance we had of saving this Earth will be non-existent. Field's leading edge is continuing to approach the southwest U.S. now moving coast to coast. The U.N. and Joint Chiefs won't delay a new strike without a clear, viable second solution. Uh, but NASA says that there might be a pocket of gas inside the meteoroid. Is that something we can fire upon to maybe push the Neo off course? Uh, no, no, not at this stage, General. Uh, NASA might be correct, but any gases trapped in the cobalt are frozen solid. Sir, before the EMP hit the moon, we were looking into another course of action. But we need Luna 5 and Logan's help. We need to get him back on the comms now. Short of a close proximity response, Mr. Sawyer, I can't see another way. And that is exactly what I'm proposing, a close proximity response. Make this quick, Steve. Logan's ship, Luna 5, is on a landing site near the collapsed mine. It has access to materials we can use to deflect the meteorite away from Earth. There is massive surface cracking near Luna 5. It, it, the area is unstable. Those cracks correspond with steel beams supporting 3,000 miles of cabling. If we collapse the beams... Logan can engineer an yes. electromagnetic pulse from the moon's surface. And with no atmosphere on the moon to interfere with the pulse, the full blast of the pulse should be enough to push the meteoroids directly away from Earth. You sure this will work? It's, sir, it, it will magnetize the meteor, altering its... Polarity, that's, a, that's basic laws of attraction. You put enough stress on two objects and it changes their relationship and trajectory. So it's reversing the dynamic, pushing the Neo away. But we have to be careful because the interior of the power station is pressurized for breathable air for the miners. It could explode back outward. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good point. The collapse itself could generate a wave of wreckage following the EMP that might push the NEO toward Earth even faster. It's a, bit, it's a big risk. Look, 
It's total annihilation regardless. Do what you must. Don't hold me here on your own. I will deny talking to you if I have to. Understood, sir. Send a signal through to the ship. Bombard Logan with frequencies until one of them cuts through the debris fields. And please, let them know to prep the ship for the EMP. The human body isn't, it's not a great conductor. So they'll be fine as long as they're on the ship. But they absolutely have to shut down all the power for a momentary electrical surge. I'm on it. Luna 5, this is Mojave Command. Do you read? Luna 5, this is Mojave Command. Do you read? This is Captain Logan Sawyer. Over. We read you. Logan, it's me. Tell me you're OK. Yeah, well, we're OK so far. We got two survivors from the oil mining company. It's my fault. No, it's not your fault, Steve. But we got bigger fish to fry up here. We got a damaged ship. And a cloud of fragments continuously headed towards Earth before the major Neo strike. Logan, look, if you can find a way to sever the support beams holding the cables under the mine's power station, you can generate an EMP to knock the Neo off course. But you absolutely have to be careful. Too much force and we'll push the meteoroid to Earth too fast. Careful. Do you remember that time you wanted to make your famous hamburgers and I had to drive you all the way across town so that you could get the good meat from Romeo's? And on the way, my phone slipped out and got wedged under the brake in Dad's car. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. You rolled through a four-way stop. Yeah. And what did I do? Instead of focusing on the brake, you actually stepped on the gas to get clear of the danger. That's right because with some problems, it doesn't help to slow down. And that's what we're gonna do here today. We are gonna step on the gas. Look, I know you like to do things your own way, brother. But maybe this time, just don't be too stubborn. Yeah, well, I promise that when it is time to put on the brakes, I will. And hey, if I... When we pull this off, I'm gonna want you to cook me up some of those burgers that I love so much, deal? That's a deal. Get down, get down, stay down, stay down. our entire network. We have no communication. It's earthquakes in, induced by the increase in volcanic activity. The edge is moving coast to coast, which means the range will reach across the Atlantic and impact the entire globe. Who knows how many grids it'll take down with it. We cannot lose access to our shared network now. Uh, it's the only thing that connects us to anything. We need to reconnect our comms to run on solar power. Can you do that? <gasps> Amanda. We've got nothing. The underground cabling between the solar power station and the observatory must have been severed. Okay. Well, that the power station is just over three miles away. We're never going to make it when there's another eruption imminent. Where, where else are the NEOs projected to hit? The last report I received showed additional alerts from our Madrid observatory, showing other moon fragments headed towards Barcelona. Other moon fragments are imminent worldwide but we've been yet to be pinpointed to an exact location. The, the, the more damage done to Earth, the less resources we have to stop the meteorite. We need Logan back online ASAP. Down, down, stay down. Down, down, stay down. Is everyone okay? Yeah. It's okay, it's okay. We gotta get out of here. Is everyone good? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. You okay? Go. Steve, are you there? Steve, do you read us? Captain, their signal is totally dark. They have no radio communication at all. Okay, their last correspondence was about collapsing all of the power grids here, right? To bring all of the power modules together to essentially create an electromagnetic pulse. Right? Is that possible? You're asking us to blow those beams underneath? fusion-powered arc welder in Portal 9, the power station, about 100 yards from our ship. Okay. 
No. You cut that main tile, snap up like a Venus flytrap. It could crash the whole ship on takeoff. Okay, well then we're gonna have to time it perfectly. Listen, look, if all of the power lines tied to the beam come together, it'll essentially whip an EMP straight at the meteoroid. Yes, assuming nothing impacts the timing. Listen, we are 20 degrees north of the mine, so a pulse from here will knock it off by 20 degrees. Yeah, that's enough for it to miss the Earth. Great. Dave and Christine, patch us into the main power line outside the ship. Cut that beam in the power station, and then get back here as soon as you possibly can. Once we're below the surface, it will give us more gravity and traction to maneuver fast. Christine? Yeah. Are you ready? Let's do it. Jane, try and connect me to Mojave again. for launch. Copy that, Captain. This is gonna be real close. Let's get inside and do this. Dave and Christine, as soon as you cut that tie, let us know so we can rev the engine. You don't have to ask us twice, Captain. The main tie is a custom joint graded at 100,000 pounds. If we cut it back 80%, it'll give it about a minute. How long did it take them to get to that port? It took them 30 seconds just to get halfway. Dave, what if you cut it to 50%? Oh, no can do, Captain. O'Bear is a TIS square. At 50%, I'll hold about a half hour. If we're lucky, but that's, uh, that's way too long. Logan, at that rate, the meteoroid will be crossing back through our flight path before it misses Earth. We'd run out of oxygen. They can cut it to 75. Dave, cut it to 75%. If this section of the electric station survived, there's still maybe people in here. Christine, what are you saying? We sent on a distress call and wait a bit, and then haul the survivors up to the ship? Yeah. Christine, we have to cut the line and go. We don't know if the barracks collapsed in the mine or not. What are you, what are you doing? Christine, I'm getting an emergency rescue signal on your radio. Find anyone and everyone here that needs to get home, Captain. Wait, they don't have the time. Good, get as many as you can and get here quick. You heard him. We have to find a more stable communication source. I, I can't leave. I have to verify if Logan is even sending that EMP. Okay, I'm gonna check the telescope now. It's got an emergency battery. The magnification reaches within two square miles of Logan, so we should be able to see what they're up to. But the feed between the telescope and the monitor has gone dark. You'll have to go to the roof to connect to a physical port. Okay. If Logan is initiating our plan, he only has about a minute. He'll get it done. No, no. I go. I'm the only one who knows how to operate that telescope fast enough. Fine. Then I go with you. Okay. Gary, just keep monitoring activity and we'll be back as soon as we can. Be careful. Okay, we will do. Okay. All right. Three. We're gonna have right, to. Ready? Okay, we have to move fast. Toxic gas levels in the air are getting dangerously high. Wait. Go back. No, I'm the only one who knows where everything is. Okay? Just be careful. You're the timeline. Christine, we have to go. So we cut it at 70%. No. Rise this time before it gives what we search for survivors and no man left behind. Christine, no. no. I'll be back by the time you're done. Christine, come on, no! Ten 
Christine, we are at 75%. We gotta go. Dave and Christine, I am engaging the manual hatch on the stern of the ship. Get here now. I don't know how stable this is. Oh, thank you. Okay. Oh, careful. It's like walking through a minefield. Yeah. Okay. This leads us up to the telescope cables. I oversaw the installation of all of it, so I know where it is. Okay. I think I see the problem here. Don't touch. The voltage is dangerously high, and you could get electrocuted. We have to be careful. Just give me a sec. These wires are too thick to use a conventional twist connector. These clamps have AC and audio-visual capability. They can reconnect any severed connections. Here you go. Watch out! You okay? Yeah. All right. Connect this. That's it. That's it. That's Logan's ship. For Madden. Yes, we acknowledge the meteorite is accelerating. Whatever attempt the Luna 5 and remaining crew on the moon have made to stop the meteorite is... has failed. Look, tell the Joint Chiefs that it's going to take at least 200 gigatons of TNT, or the equivalent of, of about 10 million Hiroshima sized bombs, uh, to stop the meteorite, and the surrounding debris field will carry all the nuclear fallout straight back down to Earth. Get here. <laughs> I'll close it. You okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Can we both saw the EMP hit the meteor before the power station wreckage even caught up to it? That has to get us something. Its polarity has to have been affected, at least marginally. With the station's circuits fried, we can gaze into a, a telescope all day long. It won't do us any good if we can't communicate with anyone. That Logan's track is still the, the best ship in the closest range to stop the Neo. We haven't been able to assess any, any, any weapons or power sources here on Earth. What, what about a, a gravity tractor? No. Logan's ship might get close enough, but even if he began circling the meteoroid hundreds of times, it would take years for to, to create a gravity tractor. Uh, Logan, Logan's ship might be completely disabled after yet another direct EMP hit, in which case his filtration system might be damaged and he'll run out of oxygen. <laughs> Here, come on. You gotta get out of here. Okay. You get up and walk. Okay. Last, fried almost all our circuits. I was trying it didn't work. I had direct visual and it. 
the wreckage from the implosion shot out of the power station. And by my calculations, it's pushing the meteoroid straight at the Earth even faster. Logan, we have to do something. Remember, the Defense Department still wants to nuke it. That nuclear blast will kill us and everyone on Earth. Look at this, Jing. There's one sustained signal here, an intense polarity. That's in the exact quadrant as a meteoroid. That's right. Which means the pulse didn't magnetize it enough to knock it off course, but it is magnetized. Unfortunately, it's under Earth's gravitational pull now, which means the angle of incidence to stop it from striking Earth is 50% greater. We are gonna need that much more power. Carrie. We don't have much time here, Carrie. One more quake and this whole building's gonna come down. Okay. Can you wiggle your toes? Um, um, yeah, yeah. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna lift this up and then slide you out. Okay? All right, come on. Come on, come over here. On the count of three. Are you ready? One, two, three. Get out. Get out. Okay. Okay, she's clear. Okay, we gotta get her to another location. Can you stand? Um, yeah, yeah, I think. Here, put your, put your arm around me. You ready? Let's go. Okay, let's get you to the bunker. There's supplies, water, and food for four weeks. You've gotta get as many people down here as you can. But, but you don't need my help. No, no. We have to get to the solar power station. They have resources there. Electric, radio. We can regain communication with Logan and General Madden. The solar power plant is three miles from here. We might have to go on foot, okay? You're safer here, okay? Okay, I, I understand. Yeah. <coughs> set, her up, set her up here. here watch your leg, watch your okay. leg. I got you. Got it? Not ideal, but uh, believe me, it could come in handy. So I've been racking my brain about something. What about the electricity in the solar power station? Could that produce a pulse? We would need an entire engineering team to form a circuit large enough to do that. Even an electrical bolt would not make it through the atmosphere. Right, a circuit would need a big enough circuit to give it another shot. Yeah, I mean, but there's nothing that size anywhere near here. I mean, we'd need something the size of a, a, a large Beidron Collider to do that. So, so we get a large Beidron Collider. I know the director of CERN. I can give him a call when we get to the power plant. Yeah, yeah, I know you do. We had dinner at his house, remember? Right. With cobalt and a meteorite, it could be conductive <laughs> enough that a pulse wouldn't even be effective. Well, we have to try. I mean, it's that or we sit around and wait for the end of the world. Gary, good luck. I got it, I got, got it. it. Go, just go. Reception. With all the atmospheric interference, we're gonna have to find a clearer place with less ash. The whole network is down. Oh no! The tires. We can't drive any further. You all right? There's a um, police call box on the highway, just up ahead. We should be able to call. They can patch us through to CERN. You 
got that? I got it, got it. The sheriff runs our security detail at the observatory. If he's still at the station, he should be at Apache Street through. Yeah, I know the sheriff too. He helped me fast track the permits for the power cavers running to the observatory. You did that? Yeah, you were working 18 hours a day trying to get the observatory up and running. You asked for my help, remember? Yeah. Yes, this is Steve and Amanda Sawyer from the observatory for Sheriff Parta. Yes, Sheriff, I need you to patch me through directly to CERN Laboratories in Switzerland, if, if you can get a call out. Yes, CERN Laboratories, it's a matter of life and death. If CERN doesn't take it out, then maybe my brother can send an EMP by rerouting power from his LIDAR. <laughs> well, sir, we will do whatever we have to do to fix this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. He's contacting CERN to enable electromagnetic pulse. Okay. So I, I, I'm taking it the visuals aren't very good, which is why we have to help my brother via a telescope? Yeah, with the ash and the daylight, it makes the uh, visibility pretty tough. But uh, this scope has digital surveying functions, so we might be able to get his trajectory. Secretary General, we have a 19 degree trajectory change with real time adjustments now at 23 degrees. The NEO has changed course. Another non-nuclear strike will neutralize the threat. Secretary General, stand by. I'm receiving your priority call from Switzerland. General Madden, slow down, doctor. What's happening? Doctor, the Sawyer team has already attempted to strike. Hundreds of miles? What? Doctor, the UN is about to launch. Secretary General, you hold that launch! Your explosion? Doesn't resemble an explosion. It looks like an electrical arc on the Earth. Oh, it's incredibly large. Jing, have we reestablished connection with the Mojave Observatory? Negative, Logan. And the ISS reports heavy damage all throughout that region. It looks like lightning, but it isn't subsiding. There is an immense charge. Jing, can you get a reading on its velocity? It's in the ionosphere now, but its position is fixed, drifting 10 degrees northeast. They must have sent a charge up to try and stop the meteoroid. According to my calculations, the electrical arc didn't do much. It went right through the cobalt. With the Earth rotating under it, the Earth's magnetic field is changing its trajectory. Look, it's moving 10 degrees northeast, which puts it right... San Francisco. It's starting to pull objects from orbit towards San Francisco. we sent from that LHC in Switzerland. It, it didn't work. I have a trajectory heading on the fragments. The pulse changed the direction slightly. The scope telemetry projected longitude and latitude of... Steve, meteors just hit San Francisco. EMP disturbances. They're increasing the Earth's tectonic activity even more now. Still two miles to the power plant. We'll see ETA on the impact. The last recorded ETA was at the observatory. It was two hours. But, I mean, with the new trajectory, couldn't be more than an hour and a half at best. Steve, I think it's time we call Madden. Maybe we have to do the nuclear strike. I don't want the nuclear option. I don't either. But at this point, if we can save some people, it's better than nothing. You know what? Maybe a half an hour ago, they would have. But not now. 
Not with the nuclear fallout and the meteor. I want to have them patch me through to NASA. I'll see what they can do. Damn it. The earthquake knocked out the landline. Our last chance is the solar power plant. Okay. That'll get us power and communication. longer out here. We need to reach Logan. See if he has anything on his end. Maybe they have some high capacity explosives, something like that, to help us. I don't know. Anything's worth a try. Let's go. We've got a visual. Closing in on the primary NEO. It's a start, although it remains to be seen what our ship can do, if anything. Well, there is some good news here. I've double-checked these coordinates, and it looks like we might have knocked it off by about 16 degrees. If we can do it by another 20, we'd be in the clear. Can you confirm that, Jane? Nina, we had a group of, what, 10 miners in here yesterday? 12, all demolitions team. Great. Excellent. Go check and see if there are any Semtex C4 plastic explosives, any kind of propane canisters, anything. Negative. They took everything with them when we dropped them off. Check again, Nina. There are no explosives on the cargo manifest. Listen, we don't have enough thrust to affect this thing with our ship, but the LIDAR there does indicate that it began accelerating in the last blast from the power station. The slowdown by about 4%. That means it might have reversed its polarity in the last pulse. You're on the right track. If we can find a way to produce another pulse, we can knock it farther off course. But the debris field is too thick to get a vector change simulation. Try a spectroscopic reading. Spectroscope is rendering a clear horizon line. Nina. We are 900 miles out from the NEO. I'll hit retrograde thrusters at 500. Good, try and get a hold of Steve and Amanda at the Mojave Observatory. See if they can help us with this. Luna 5 to Steve and Amanda Sawyer. Come in, Sawyer team. Luna 5 to Steve and Amanda Sawyer. Nothing. Damn it. Logan, we need a course of action. I know here. that. And we'll come up with one. But for now, just keep heading toward the primary NEO. Steady, everybody. Getting a signal from NASA's DC line. This is Captain Logan Sawyer. Come in. Logan Sawyer. General Madden at the Pentagon. General. We are standing by, ready and willing to do whatever is necessary, General. Your brother relayed a message about creating an EMP using the LIDAR on your ship. The LIDAR? because it's a light-generated pulse along an optical cable and not an electrical conduit. General, that... that would involve some serious risk to both the spaceship and my crew, sir. We are within 500 miles of the primary NEO. Take it out now, Captain Sawyer. Do it now, before the imminent strike. General? We lost his transmission. Yeah. We're too close to the meteor right now. It's blocking the signal. Jing, how many kilowatts do we have available? 70. Okay. Direct all 70 kilowatts toward the optical antenna. Logan, are you sure you want to do that? It's not a direct conductor. It will feed back and blow us up. Surface it will blow us up. isn't conductive, but the mirrors are. Right, Nina? He's right. The mirror polish fullerite. Right. They're super conductive. We should be okay. Let's do it. Retrograde to stop 13%. You know there's a chance this will still blow us up. True, but I don't want to live knowing I let everyone on Earth die. Yeah, we're making a lot of tough choices here, but some are better than others. Come on, strap in. Let's go, strap in. Power's wrapping up. 
I never thought I'd run the max on a 70 kilowatt circuit without anywhere to escape. I didn't either, but we do what we have to do. Shield your eyes, the light from the LiDAR could blind you. On my count, in five, four. We are at 110 percent. Three. 120. Two. 125. Step it back, Nina. Send it to a visual on the Neo and a craft nearby. Looks like there's been an electrical arc and an explosion. Steve? I think it's the Luna 5. You're telling me Logan fired an electrical pulse? I mean, that was our plan B. I don't know if it's worked, but I mean, looks like he was thinking what we were thinking. Not that. That'll lead back to the ship. We have to send a rescue detail. After three EMPs in a row, that's gonna take days. I understand that, but I have to do something. We keep moving forward, and we stop this thing. <laughs> Come on. Come on! Let's go. The entire system is toast. We might as well be in a shipping container. Oh, we have no air filtration now. We'll run out of oxygen before the meteorite even hits. My last reading mm. on oxygen was about 50%. Captain, we need a rescue detail. It will take us hours to repair this. Something colliding with the hull. Meteorites? If it were meteorites, it'd be piercing the hull. The satellite. Heliostat just drifted by and attached itself to the hull. The more frequent, the closer the meteor it gets. We have to get in touch with Logan. See, you know, we just, are. Just, just, just hear me out. Assuming that his ship survived, he's he's the key to all of this. He's still close enough to the meteorite. He's the only one. Okay. Well, if we can get one of these radios. Up to the ridge line, we may be able to break through. I don't know. If we can't get a full signal, none of this means anything. Okay. But we can still do Morse code. We can keep moving, and we can keep trying as we move. Send Morse code through the comms? Yeah. I mean, if one of us gets injured, then the other one just keeps trying to, to direct the meteorite. Amanda, come on. 
I know. You don't know Morse code. Here, quick. Here. Breathe. 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 Okay. What is that? Logan's name. Okay? Watch. In case you're the only one left. You need to know this. Okay. Let's hope it doesn't come to that. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's get up there. Okay. See if you can tap into at least enough reserve power to get something going to the comms. Even if we get the ship to start again, the satellites will eventually breach the hull. Work. Hey, that's Morris. Is it the observatory? It's Steve and Amanda. They're asking if we could restart the ship. <laughs> no, tell them. We're lucky to be alive, the ship is dead. And ask them why Heliostat satellites are attaching themselves to the ship. <clears throat> you okay? Yeah. Okay, let me try. Let me try. <clears throat> Keep your mask on. He's alive. The ship's dead. Satellites keep sticking to them. What? He said they've lost all power in the ship. It's completely dead, but heliostat satellites keep sticking to the ship. Well, my, my company deployed 80% of those heliostats into orbit. If they're striking the ship... That means it's magnetized. Yeah. The satellites too. And if they're magnetized, it means they they share the same polarity. And if they they share the same polarity, then that means the heliostat mirrors will be pointing in the same direction. And the whole ship will act as a massive mirror in space. Logan can reflect the sun's rays toward the yeah. meteoroid, and the concentrated light could destroy it. If he can adjust his rate of descent by forty-five degrees between the Earth and Sun. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell him to slow his descent by any means necessary. And let those babies stick to the ship. I got you, I got you. You okay? You okay? Yes. says the satellites are polarized. Yeah. They're all facing the same direction. Logan, she's right. Their polarity and ours are the same. Nina, pull the manual air evacuator around the stern of the ship. The wall is open. Half of the air, but we're slowing down. Morse code. She's saying we should redirect the satellites manually? Yeah, that's what we're doing. Because the satellites don't have any power, we're using the last of the air in the ship to turn the ship and direct the satellites at the meteorite. I'm keying a response, letting them know we have the satellites and the ability to aim them. How will that stop the meteoroid? Because each one of those mirrors has the ability to focus thousands of degrees of heat. The combined energy will create an explosion on the meteorite surface. So it will either push it of course or blow it apart. That's right. 
All right. We're almost lined up. Heat reading at 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Logan, the ambient heat from the satellites is giving us reading higher than the re-entry. Stay the course. We're three degrees off. We're gonna hit Earth. Captain, that beam is at least as hot as an X-ray laser. Secretary, our planetary team is... We will end the threat, Secretary, but not without authorization from the President of the United States. I understand the UN's eagerness to act, that accuracy is just as important as speed. Wait. You're actually going to hack the U.S.'s cyber assets to prevent us from acting independently? Yeah, the terms are clear, Secretary General. Thank you for your candor. Give me the CIA, Director. Code Theta. Request full CIA hack with a digital standby to breach the UN Data Cloud Firewall on my orders. Code name, Kill Switch. Contact POTUS on a secure line and tell her I'm attempting to delay a global nuclear strike. Clear, team. The concentrated light beam has destroyed the monument and burned the land outside of Rapid City, South Dakota. Initial reports suggest there are no fatalities. Minor injuries and smoke inhalation. They are evacuating the area. Ground fall estimates show major impacts in Madrid, most of the eastern seaboard, Mexico City, and Tokyo. The bulk of the debris field is entering the atmosphere and impacting with a wide range. Fatalities are in the hundreds of thousands. Come on. Okay. We should be 100% course corrected now. Let's try again. Contact. The particles, they're being pulled back toward the core. And with the surrounding rocks, it's going to make the meteoroid twice the size. Yeah. They're being induced into a state of reaction. I, I, I thought Neos were held together by gravity and friction. Some are. But something like cobalt, it can be ionized like water. Let me show you. called Vanderwall's force, okay? So, these rocks are the molecules making up the magnetic polarity of the meteoroid. If you superheat them, like Logan just did, the meteoroid breaks apart. But it's still subject to the freezing temperatures in space, okay? And then in the expansion and contraction, the, the molecules float free and, and align their charge. We're, we're in the state of... Emergency level five right now. They've already initiated the international nuclear strike. We have to get to the power station, and take cover right away. Steve, listen to me. If there is anything that you want to say to Logan, you need to say it now. Come on. I'll try more. What do you want me to say? Just, just, just say, Logan, are you okay? Go. Go. I'll never forgive myself if he doesn't make it out of this. It's not your fault. Are you? He's up there because of me. No, I know Logan. 
Logan doesn't do anything he doesn't want to do. He's up there because that's where he wanted to be. He's up there because I put him there. Stop it. You gave him an opportunity. He got to go up there. He got to live his dream. Besides, in case you haven't noticed, it's not exactly safe back on Earth either. He's probably equally as worried about you. <laughs> That's Morse. My brother? I'm here. I'm okay. I'm here. We're okay. We have full signal from Mojave. <laughs> yes, Logan. We're here. He's there. Thank you, brother. Boy, are you a sound for sore ears. I'm gonna get my crew home. But I know you still need our help up here, or there won't be a home to get back to. So how do you feel about saving the world? <laughs> I'd love to. But, uh, I'm afraid we're running on fumes up here. Okay, the beam's working, okay? We just need you to redirect it toward the meteoroid's path. The closer you can get your ship, the more intense the light beam hitting the meteoroid will be. We'll be with you every step of the way, man. Set the thrusters for 50%. Wait. I'm getting an incoming signal. Put it through. Hello, Steve. General Madden. I did everything I could. The unit initiated a nuke strike. I repeat, eminent strike. General, there's, there's still the issue of the nuclear fallout. I believe the nuke strike will carry the fallout past Earth and route to the sun. General, please, you said you would do everything in your power to help us. Please! I know this is difficult. The countdown's already begun. Sorry, every single nuke is knocked off course and detonating prematurely. I kept telling them this was a risk. I did my best to hold off the nuclear strike, but there was too much international pressure to initiate the launch. I'm looking at it right here. The, the only good news is that uh, by not hitting the primary NEO, most of the fallout is dissipating into space. But the meteorite strike is imminent. I repeat, strike is imminent. Seek shelter if you can. We have to find a way to warn Logan before we do anything else. Okay. The nuclear radiation is going to make it impossible to communicate by radio. The solar power plant is half a mile from here. We can go. Let's go. Let's go. Logan, the guy you counter in the ship just spiked by 50 Rankins. It's too late. They tried to nuke the meteoroid, but it didn't work. Freeze! I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. We're all nearing the red zone. We have to get to our suits now. Jane, slow down. Slow down. Conserve your O2. This is gonna take all of us to do this.
Take care of the repairs. Do you have enough O2? I'll be fine. I'll take care of the ship. You guys get the air filtration system running in here. It'll buy us some time, okay? Well then, good luck. Is that what we're selling here today? Nothing ever scares you. Ting, I am terrified. I'll see you in a few. And if I remember correctly, each satellite mirror generates 30 megawatts per square meter. We might have just enough of these satellites still here to create the directed heat that we need. If I can just get these things. Captain, the O2 reserves are now 23%. I know how much air I have left, Nina. What's our ETA to impact? I'm sorry, Logan. The last blast took out the signal to our cloud database. Uh, meteor. Must be almost inside Earth's atmosphere. If I can just get these adjusted. Oh, no. Oh, wait. Throw out the fuel cell. Oh, no! <laughs> yourself. Oxygen level, 19%. That makes two of us. There you go. Even split. 50-50. It would only last us about half an hour. Listen to me. I know Logan is our main pilot. But you have experience piloting a craft. No. I can only run the directional protocols, monitor the emergency systems. We can land without Logan. We can try and find a way, but... Oxygen at 14%. Yeah. It is a zero. It's not Morse code. No. It's an automated alarm that sounds when the astronaut's biometrics goes dead. That's Nina. That's Jing. And I just lost a brother. Breathe, breathe. Please. Please. Is that Steve and Amanda? No. It's Logan. He's still alive. I'll contact the surface. I'll let Steve know he's still alive.
Logan said we might be able to wire the ship to the power on one of the satellites and jumpstart the ship. There's no time to waste. We start the ship and we go and get him. We still have the meteoroid. We can't keep fighting without oxygen. Let's not give up the fight then. without you, baby. Please, breathe. It's almost here. We can't, can't, can't stay here. largest solar ray in the world. We could stop it. Don't say that. Don't say that. Come on. Put your arm around me. Power um, junction. It's, it's, it's okay. That's all I need to know. We're okay. No. Uh, Come on. Come on. switch to the solar panel array is over here. We can use that to move the panels. <sighs> it's Logan. He's still alive. He says he's trying to break into the, the, the satellite to get to the solar to, to run his suit, but he's running low on oxygen. I never wanted any of this. I got tangled up in distractions. When I should have been focusing on us. I got distracted. He's able to tap into reserve power. We have access to the most powerful solar array we can create right here. I, I, I know what you're thinking, Steve. But even with the meteoroid and, and terminal velocity, we couldn't generate a, enough heat to affect it. Listen to me. We have to go faster than terminal velocity. If, if we can create some sort of power behind Logan's position. Step on the gas. With enough solar light from, from Earth, 
and space. It should be able to generate enough heat to to break the meteoroid into into enough pieces that it won't fuse back together. You took my advice. You had the PDCO install solar sails. Yeah. Well, we had to get to Mars. The outside of solar sail is mirrored, so if he if he turns it inside out, the reflection will be the size of a football field. Oh, two levels at seven percent. to set up that beam, hitting the meteoroid from space. If we turn the solar panel array all in the same direction. These are just like the solar farms on the moon. You should be able to adjust the entire row with the server lever manually. Maybe with the both of us, we could at least adjust one row. The whole thing would take a whole day. Let's try. Let's try. Pull. Logan. He's headed straight for the ship. Get to the decompression chamber. We'll open it manually. Shockwave's on its way. That blast is going to take everything with it. No. W what are you talking about? Get down, get down. Are you okay? He cleared the plan and the fallout. We... We did it. Yeah. Yeah. Logan. Steve. If you just saw that, then you know the coast is clear. You gotta be worried there for, for a little bit, brother. Wait, how did, how did you get full power? Oh, don't you worry about me, little brother. Jing and Nina here helped me snag one of those solar sails from one of those rogue satellites that were attached to the ship. They managed to wire up just enough of these solar panels to fire up the ship while I was flailing around in space. Air filtration is running full blast. Plus, we put heat balance from the satellites to reinforce the hull for re-entry. I told you sometimes you have to go full throttle. I'll show you full throttle. Underground. 
Knowing that you two were out here, saving Earth. I saw the explosion! You did it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we did it. You know what I'm in the mood for? What? One of those, uh, those Romeo <laughs> prime cut burgers. <laughs> you got it. You got it. <laughs> Gary. Gary. Steve Sawyer. It's Matt. Hello, General. You show skill and determination. You show willingness to confront difficult choices in the community. You show intelligence and experience. And above all, you show true leadership. Because you took full responsibility even when you knew it wasn't your fault and you brought your team together. I also made a full report describing the recklessness of Taurus Mining Corporation and your attempt to get them to comply with safety protocols. But please know, none of this was your fault. And I consider it an honor to be counted amongst your friends. You heard the man, Steve. You better fire up that grill. <laughs>